Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're doing another how to edit like video. We've had some requests uh, to edit like Jack Morris. If you don't know who he is, um, he is the Instagrammer Do You Travel. Um, he also um, travels with Gypsy Lust as well, um, who's another Instagrammer, and they both have a very similar Instagram feed. You can see this is their Instagram feed. Um, their photos are incredibly flat photos. Um, each photo has a different kind of unique uh, editing to it. The main thing is they've got a lot of fade going on, uh, not a lot of contrast, and quite desaturated uh, and pink kind of browny images. Um, a good example of whether you use browns and pinks are when you look at their snow ones. If you look at the highlights, for example, they've got some pinks in their highlights and the shadows are quite brown. Uh, same goes for here. Um, so we're going to try and do a color grading tutorial for them today. If you do enjoy it, it would be great if you could like this video and also subscribe. Um, also, go check me out on Instagram. I'm Sebastian underscore JWB. This is my Instagram. It would be great if you could go check me out. And also, and also my brother, which is Matthew underscore GKB. Um, also, you can go ahead and buy some of our presets as well. They're currently all on sale, so go and have a look down below in the description um, and get your preset packs on 50% off. But without any further ado, let's get started with today's video. So, without any further ado, let's get started in today's color grade. Now, firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up the shadows just to brighten up the image, and I'm going to drop down the highlights. The idea is here I'm going to try and make this image slightly flatter. So I don't want to introduce much contrast. So I've increased uh, the shadows, decreased the highlights, increased the whites, and decreased the blacks. Um, so now we've introduced a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to take the contrast slider, and I'm going to drag that contrast slider down quite a dramatic amount to about minus 42. Uh, get the clarity slider and also drag that down probably to about minus 10. As for the colors, um, tint, I'm going to try and just introducing a little bit of magenta into uh, the image just because, uh, as we saw, they have some magenta and pinks in their images. So I've dragged it up to plus 24. Um, I'm going to get the blues and I'm going to drag the, um, the temperature slider up a bit just to make the image slightly warmer. So we're not going to do much more with the basic panel for the time being. We will come back to that a bit later. The next thing we're going to do is come up with the RGB tone curve uh, and we're going to do a simple S curve. Just put three points on your curve, make sure the center one is as best as you can get it to the center. And then we're just going to simply make a nice S curve, nothing too dramatic, just ever so slightly. So you can see here, if I use this as an example, these photos here have a lot of fade. Um, so we're going to introduce some nice fade into our shadows by lifting up the there. Maybe just crush the blacks ever so slightly. I might actually drop off the fade ever so slightly there. So sort of copy that tone curve there. And the next thing we're going to do is create, come onto the red slider and do the same thing, but this time we're not going to do just as much, so we're going to lift up the highlights. So we're now getting those pinks in the highlights. Uh, we're going to drop it off in the shadows. Uh, then we're going to counteract that by coming down to the greens and doing the same thing again, increasing the greens in the highlights, decreasing the greens in the shadows. Um, and you can see here the purples are really looking quite purple. Um, we're really bringing out those colors. We may have to start to desaturate this in a little bit. Uh, what you usually find is when you mess around with the RGB tone curves, um, you tend to get this going on, you tend to get a lot of saturation in the image that you then want to mess around with a bit later. Uh, then finally on the blue tone curve we can do the exact same thing. Okay, so if I turn off the tone curve and turn it back on again, you can see the difference that's made to our overall image. Okay, so we're now going to close the tone curve and come onto our HSL sliders and we're going to work our way through. So firstly starting with the hues, the idea is here we're going to get the oranges, the yellows and the greens and we're going to just drag them down a little bit. So I'm going to get the yellows, drag those down, get the greens, drag those down. If I drag the yellows down, you can see in the background those green hills, they become more brown. Um, and the idea is we're just trying to make the image slightly browner, so that's what we're going to be going for. Again, if I drag the oranges down, it kind of helps those browns come out a little bit and also introduces a little bit more magenta into the image. Um, I'm going to leave the red slider alone just because I don't want the skin color to be over, over adjusted. Um, as for the blues, I'm probably going to increase the blues and maybe the aquas ever so slightly. Again, that just increases the magenta in the image. We don't want anything to look too teal. Um, so increase the blues and also the aquas in your image as well. Moving on to saturation, one of the first things I really want to do here is just decrease the amount of magenta in this photo. So I'm going to come onto the purple slider and just get the saturation, uh, that's the one here, and drag that down to about minus 40, and then get the purples and also drag those down to about minus 20, minus 30 as well. Um, and then I'm going to get the red saturation and drag that down, probably about minus 30 will probably do quite nicely. Then I'm going to get the greens 
and also drag those down as well just because I want to make sure the image doesn't have too much green in it we're going for those dark uh, those nice brown finally we're just going to desaturate those blues as well in the image you'll notice a lot of his photos are very desaturated so that's the look we're going for in today's um, color grade we're really desaturating these colors now if I press the backslash key you can see the before edit and here's the after so there's not a lot has been changed but you can see we're beginning to get that nice flat look that do you travel has in his images okay if we come back down to luminance one thing I want to do here is just brighten up the purples um, not too much but enough so that they become slightly more noticeable that is the main color in this photo so you can see if I introduce it completely we get these very very bright fields in front um, I think that looks a little bit odd so we're going to increase that to about plus 10 plus 20 and also drag up the magentas as well if I drag up the reds it kind of helps with the skin on this particular image you will find for some images that will make the skin look slightly weird so just mess around with that as you like Again, I'm going to drag up the oranges and the yellows, probably the greens ever so slightly. The blues, mm, I'm probably just going to, actually I might drag the blues up as well, just lightening up each of those colours just to lighten up this image a little bit more. So if we go back to Do You Travel, okay, one thing I want to try and do is make these images, uh, this image slightly warmer. So we're going to try and achieve that through split toning. Um, if you come to split toning, the idea is here we can introduce any color we want into the highlights or into the shadows. Now if you press Alt on your keyboard, you can see what color you are selecting. Um, I'm going to probably go for around 37 in the highlights. Um, I'm just going to drag it all the way up just so I can get an idea of what all the colors are. In fact, actually, I quite like that as well. I'm just looking here in the sky and I'm trying to find the closest match to what he has in his images. Um, again, if I come back down to 37. Okay, so I'm going to choose probably about 284. Um, obviously this varies again for your images so I'm just going to increase the highlights until I think I've got a suitable amount of pink in the highlights okay and then we're going to come down to shadows and do the same thing uh, here I'm trying to make the sort of brown color in the shadows um, so I'm looking probably I'm thinking around 40 is quite a nice um, choice and then I'm just going to drag up the slider of the saturation until I get something I quite like so here we're looking at about 19 okay so if I turn off the split toning and turn it on again you can see how it's made the image slightly browner using the split toning uh, next thing is detail one thing I would suggest with detail is you probably don't want to do too much but I'm gonna just use noise reduction just to flatten this image slightly a little bit more um, it just smooths the image out a little bit more um, you don't necessarily need to do this I just like to do it in some of the photos that I'm editing yeah so I'm just going to increase the noise reduction to about 30 in this image and then I'm gonna close that up um, we're just going to come down to effects. I'm going to introduce a tiny bit of vignette simply because I want the bottom here just to be faded out a little bit more than it currently is. So minus 13 is probably going to do quite nicely and nothing more than that. Um, one thing you can do that I have noticed Jack Morris does in some of his photos um, is he does add grain in some of his photos. So if you're going to add grain, I would recommend um, going for somewhere around 40% grain, 50% grain. Um, and then just leaving the size and roughness about the same, maybe increase the size ever so slightly. Um, in this image, I'm gonna go without grain. I don't really want to add any grain to this image, um, but that's what you could do if you want to add grain to your image. Okay, finally, we're gonna come down to camera calibration. Okay, we're gonna get the shadows and we're gonna drag those up. I'm just gonna type in here 10, um, just cause I wanna add a little bit more purple into the image. You can see if I drag it all the way up, it makes the image um, very very vibrant magenta um, which looks weird but you can see that's the color we're adding so that's why we're going for about plus 10 okay now the next thing we're gonna do is just basically mess around with the saturation of the red green and blue primary I'm not gonna mess with the hues in this particular image um, saturation for the red primary for each of them we're gonna drop them now for the red primary I'm gonna go for about minus 30 I'm thinking and um, you can see if I drop it too much the skin starts to look weird um, so I'm thinking about minus 25 minus 30 is a good bet. Uh, green primary, again, you can see what happens when I drop that. It just makes the image slightly flatter and slightly more desaturated. Um, so we're going for minus 15 there. And then for the blue primary, you can do one of two things. One, you can drop the saturation just to fit with the rest of the image. Alternatively, if you increase it, you can see the girl stands out a little bit more. Um, I am going to, in this specific image, drop it to about minus 15 again. Um, and I'm going to just go over the girl with a brush. So we're going to close up the camera calibration now and come up to the brush tool, new brush and double click on effect just to reset all of these to zero. And then all I'm going to do is basically take some of the contrast away and brighten up the side of her face just so there's less shadow and harsh lighting on her face. So I'm going to drag the shadows up to about plus 30, uh, the exposure up ever so slightly. I'm just going to paint all over um, and I'm just going to see the effect that has on the image. And then we're going to adjust it again just to get what we're looking for. Now, one thing you can do is you can do um, a few brush layers. I'm just gonna paint the complete, the whole body 
in just one brush um, just to adjust the exposure and then what I'm going to do is hone in on the colors using another brush. So I've painted all over and I'm thinking maybe brighten up the shadows a little bit more. I'm going to drop down the highlights just because I don't want it to be too extreme. Um, I think I've done the shadows a bit too much so we're going to go for 50 in the shadows. Um, as a saturation I'm going to saturate it ever so slightly more, that plus 10 will do nicely and then probably increase the temperature just to add some more of those browns back into the image. And then I'm going to drop the tint probably to minus 10 just because I don't want there to be too much purple um, on the skin because it can look a bit weird. Um, and in fact once I've done that I'm thinking probably drop the saturation down to 5, I don't want it oversaturated. Okay so first press the backslash key now, you can see what this looked like before and now what it looks like after. We're beginning to get a lot more um, in his style, we're beginning to get that nice flat image um, and lots of his photos will basically colour grade in a flat style and then what they'll do is hone in on the colours for each individual image so no image has its own complete colour grade and that is the same as another one, it all edits very slightly differently, you've just got those base colours in the high highlights and the shadows that mainly come from the split toning. Okay, so that's probably it for that brush. Um, I'm probably going to create a new brush um, and one thing I like to do is just paint over the highlights in the hair with a brush um, and I just think it makes the hair look a lot nicer. Now this is just one thing I'm adding just to give it a personal twist. Um, I'm just going to increase the clarity probably to about plus 30 in this image um, and then uh, reset the shadows, uh, drop the saturation down a tiny bit and all this is going to do is make the hair stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to click done here and what I might do is come back down to camera calibration and just mess around with these sliders just to see what we can do with the hues. Um, so for the red primary I'm going to try and increase that to about plus 40%. And then what I'm going to do is try and decrease the blue primary. Now what this tends to do is give a nice um, colour for the uh, skin tones. So I'm going to decrease that to minus 40. And then what I'm going to do is probably increase the green primary um, to about 50% of the way. Um, I just think this adds a little bit more interest. Somewhere around there should do nicely and in fact I might just reset the tint in the shadows just to kind of sort that out there. Okay so I think we're probably done there. If I turn off the camera calibration you can see the dramatic difference that has on the image. If I turn it back on again uh, it just flattens the image a little bit more and kind of desaturates um, those purples. So again if I show you the before and the after that is the colour grade we're going for. Uh, I don't really want to do too much more to this image. One thing you can do is take it into Photoshop and maybe add a flare into it if you wanted to just kind of um, make it a little bit more sunset vibed um, but I think that's probably what we're looking for for this photo. Um, now I will probably try and put together a preset pack. If it's not available once I upload this video it will be available very soon. If you want the preset pack just comment down below and like this photo just so I can try and get that out a little bit quicker for you guys. But I hope you did enjoy this video. It was a quick colour grading tutorial. Um, one thing I'm going to do here is you can then just click the plus button on presets Select a new folder and I'm just going to call this Do You Travel and I'm just going to save that preset there. Um, one thing you can then do if you wanted to, so for example I've got another photo here, I don't think this preset will work on this particular photo but we could try it out. The idea is here once you've got another photo you just select that photo, come over to your presets, um, you can buy one of our presets and this is how you would use it, then literally just select that preset and apply it to that photo. So you can see there we get that sort of purple look in the highlights. Um, you'd probably in this case want to desaturate those purples quite a, quite a bit and maybe desaturate those reds and brighten up the face. Um, but you can see what that does. I'm going to probably put together a preset pack for you guys. But that is it for you guys today. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did it'd be great if you could check us out on Instagram and also go check out our website. Um, if not I will see you in the next video. Live long and prosper.